Another way to view this is, why bother with all of those details? I mean, who can really keep all of that information in their mind and construct these extraordinarily elaborate visualizations? Well, some people can. My friend was a good example of that. Most people, in reality, can't get to his level of detail. Now, interestingly, over the years, it seems like a lot of the people who can get to that level of the detail are people who are really good at math. Theoretical mathematicians, theoretical physicists, they seem to have an extraordinary capability for visualizing. You're going to be somewhere on a gradient. The way you want to think about how much you really want to pack into your visualization is twofold. First, you want to ask yourself, am I getting tense? Is it stressing me out? Am I no longer able to be relaxed while I'm doing these visualizations? This relaxation is very important to this process. Another one is, of course, effectiveness. Is it more effective when I have more or less detail? And again, that may be situation-based. So there may be some things for which more detail works better for you. There may be other types of things for which less detail works better for you. Let's take a look a little bit at the how-to of less detail visualizations. A really great way of thinking about this is how do you normally experience reality? Again, we've all got our filters. So if we think about this from a metaphoric sense and we're trying to sort of convince other portions of ourselves to accept our visualization as the same or as close to possible as our normal external sensory input, well, knowledge of these filters can be very, very helpful. Remember what we were talking about with the sports psychology stuff. When you're going down a hill, visualizing yourself going down a hill skiing, for instance, you don't slow down the visualization. You don't speed it up. You do it at real time. And so when we're aware of something in any given moment, there are things that we favor. We might favor visual more. We might favor audio more. We might favor our body sense, our kinesthetics, our touch more. You can get a little sense for which of these you might favor by saying, which of these phrases on the screen right now are more likely to come out of your mouth? Do you notice yourself saying one of these more than others? So do you say, I see what you mean, or I hear you, or I feel you in response to other people? If you can't figure this out, maybe you can ask your partner, or a good friend, uh, or maybe even one of your kids or something. Someone who's around you a lot, um, and just say, hey, you know, did one of these phrases or another one like them sort of sound familiar? Do I use this a lot? Now let's apply this to actually practicing your visualizations. So again, we're going to go ahead and have you close your eyes. Clo don't read the screen anymore. Just go ahead and close your eyes. Now I want you to visualize yourself in a very beautiful place. I don't care where that place is. I don't need to know anything about that place. I just want you to visualize yourself in a very beautiful place. And I'm just going to give you a couple of moments to really sort of bring that visualization in. Now look around. Just observe. You're in this very beautiful place. Just look around and observe. Just notice what's going on around you. Notice what it's like to be in this place, to be experiencing this place. As you do this, I want you to become aware of how you're experiencing it. Are you primarily seeing it? Are you hearing things in this place? Are you experiencing a sense of touch associated with this place? Are you touching anything? Is anything touching you? Are you even just feeling your clothes touching you if you're wearing clothes? If you're seated, do you feel yourself sitting down? 
And can you sort of approximate how much you're using visual, how much you're using auditory, how much you're using touch base elements in this visualization? Again, I'm just going to be quiet for a moment. Just go ahead and try to experience this. Okay, go ahead and begin to come out of your visualization now. And go ahead and start, come back to us in the class. Now that's a very, very powerful way to learn about how you um, experience things and how you filter things. Something that you may notice is that it will be different based on what it is that you're visualizing. I had you visualize a very beautiful place. Um, if you think about it in relation to goals, if you want a new car, for example, well, how you visualize yourself in a car will probably be very different. And it may even be a different mix of those elements than how you visualize yourself in that beautiful place that you were in a minute ago. And so again, everything is very contextual. It relates to the goal. It relates to where you're at at any given moment. And what you really need to get down is that there is a certain set of tools. And at any given time, you're combining these different tools in a way that's most effective for you. And if things aren't effective, then you need to change the tools. And you just keep changing and changing and changing and changing the tools until you've got that effectiveness piece. There is no one right way. There never will be any one right way. Because who you are is constantly changing. The circumstances around you are constantly changing. Everything is in flux all the time. Let's take a little bit more detail here in terms of how to do less detailed visualization. So what you're looking for is how much you can visualize at once and still remain focused and relaxed. That's a really good benchmark for where your limit should be on how much you should be packing in to your visualization. If you push it beyond that comfort point, you can bring in negative emotions like doubt. You know, you can wonder if you're doing it right, for instance, and that brings in tension. Uh, then you're not as relaxed. So you want to be careful with things like that. Now, it's possible that you will not um, need to go to the furthest capability of your own personal uh, ability to visualize things. You know, maybe it will be very, very vague, very audio-based visualizations, uh, very sound-based or very touch-based visualizations uh, that will be what works for you. So I don't want to bias you here and, and make you think, oh, I've got to, you know, sort of get better at it. What is sort of interesting is that you will get better at it over time. The more you visualize, the better you'll get at visualizing. It's very much like any skill. Your brain will begin to adapt and you'll begin to get better at it. Uh, so just sort of find what's comfortable. Find what your comfortable range is. It, it can, there can be a place where it's as uncomfortable with vagueness as there is with detail. So you want to just find your comfortable range and know that that's the capacity that you have to work with initially for creating your visualizations. 